Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk to you guys about how we can do planar tracking for an object that's going to be moving onto the screen and eventually ending up off the screen. So the main thing I want to focus on in this video is how when you try to track an object that's moving on or off screen, you tend to get distortions because the object that's moving on or off the screen can't really be tracked when it's not in view. The way that the tracking works it has to actually visually see the object, of course. So you tend to get a little bit of bumpiness on the edges when something moves on or off the screen. So our end result will hopefully look something like this, where we have a car that moves onto the screen. It goes all the way to the other side of the screen. And as it enters and leaves, there's no jumpiness. It pretty much just goes in a straight line as a car would. Okay, so I've started by going ahead and creating a new timeline. When we want to add in the planner tracking, we have to go over to the Fusion tab. So with a default clip, you should see Media In and Media Out here. With Media In 1 selected, I'm going to right click, go to Add Tool, down to Tracking and Planar Tracker. This creates the tool that will allow us to pick up on the tracking data. So for it to track properly, we need to connect Media In to Planar Tracking and I'll connect that to Media Out as well so we can see it up here in the top right. And for the settings for the Planar Tracker, we're going to want to make it Operation Mode Track. Under the Pattern section, we set the tracker to Hybrid Point Area. And for motion type, I'm going to be setting it to translation here because all we're trying to do is track the movement of the car across the screen. So we don't need rotation, we don't need scale, and we don't need perspective. That would add a lot of extra complexity and probably give us a worse result in the end anyway. So I'm just going to do translation here. Everything else can pretty much be set as it is. So now what we need to do in the timeline is find the frame where we want to set the reference for the car. So that's going to be sometime when it's already on screen. I think a good time would probably be um, somewhere around here where it's completely out in the open and there's nothing blocking the car whatsoever. So in my case, it's frame 54, but obviously your clip's going to be different. So I'm going to zoom in here. And now what we need to do is basically use a pen tool. You can see all of the uh, tracker tools up here, but we'll just use the pen append tool to draw the shape of the car. So I'm just going to be clicking around and setting pen points. If you've ever used Photoshop, it's exactly like that. And go around the shape of the car, uh, roughly outlining how it looks and pretty much just going around it until we have our shape. It doesn't need to be exact, uh, but obviously closer is better. So just keep setting pin points until we get all the way back around and complete the circuit. So now we have a rough outline of the car set there. And in the inspector for the planar tracker, we need to set the reference time. So it defaults to frame zero, but when you hit set, it will take the current frame that you have selected in the timeline and set that here. So that's gonna mean that everything's gonna be tracking with respect to frame 54. So we can track forward and we can track backwards. So down here under pattern, you have a few controls for doing the tracking. To the left and right of the stop button are single frame tracking. And then further off to the side is track to the end for either direction. So if you hit over here on the left, it'll track to the start. And if you hit over on the right, it'll track to the end, or at least until you hit the stop button for it to stop tracking. So to really demonstrate here that once we get to the edge of the screen, the tracking is going to look bad initially. I'm just going to let it keep tracking and track to the end until it's well off screen. So let's go ahead and do that here. And you'll see it creates these frames. It looks good up until about when the car goes off screen and then there'll be some random bumpiness or usually there is. But once it's completely off screen untrackable, it'll just stop there. So I'm also gonna go back to the reference time. So that's frame 54, you can hit the go button here and I'm gonna track to the start of the video. And if it's anything like I was doing in the testing, we should get some bumpiness after it gets past the tree and it goes off screen. You can see that as long as there's still a little bit of the tracking, it's fine. But when it gets over here to about uh, frame 20 or so, you'll see that it kind of dips down here and the car obviously isn't doing that in reality. So if we let it track with that data, it would look pretty bad in the final shot. So the best solution that I found is to actually get rid of the bad tracker data and only keep what's on the inside where it can track properly. So basically what we want to do is cut away the frames where it's too off screen to track. So to figure that out, we're going to have to zoom in here and use the left and right arrows on my keyboard to kind of figure out 
when is it still tracking properly like over here in frames 23 24 25 it's still fine even with the tree in the way uh, but as soon as we kind of dip down here to frame 19 18 17 it starts to look really bad and then when it's well off screen we probably don't really want to track that uh, it's not moving anyway so that data is not necessary so we're going to cut away everything before frame 20 because that's when it starts to dip down so in order to trim these keyframes, you can see in the timeline here, that come before frame 20. What we have to do is hit over here, uh, trim to start, that's the left side, and then trim to end is over here as the third selection. So we're gonna trim to start. So it'll say here that this will affect your data and splines, that's fine, that's actually what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So you can see in the timeline how it cut away all of those early frames. So if I go back to frame one and I play it now, it's not even gonna start tracking until frame 20. But that's actually good because that means that it won't be tracking any of those bad movements. So now what we need to do is the same thing but in the ending frames. So let's kind of go figure out when it starts to look bad. Up at frame 69 it's still fine, 71 still good. But it looks like when the jump happens is about frame 73. Because you can see that although it's going to the left, once we jump to frame 73, the tracker actually moves back to the right, which is not what we want. So I'm going to cut away everything after frame 72. So with frame 72 set up here in the timeline, I'm going to trim to end and delete the extra data over there. So now if we play our tracker from start to finish, so back to frame zero of this clip and play it, all of the tracking should be in a straight line and we've eliminated the bumpiness. So now what we need to do to kind of turn this into a more usable clip is going to be to take the operation mode and switch it to steady. So this will actually follow the car as it moves across the screen. So we can see with steady mode enabled, as soon as it gets to about frame 20, it's going to start following that car. Obviously it's off screen right now, so we're going to need to add a transform adjuster. Um, but as far as I can tell, it seems to move in a straight line and it looks pretty good in terms of its tracking. So let's add a transform node. So right click, add tool, transform, and transform here. I'm gonna connect the planner tracker to the transform and to media out as well. So we're pretty much gonna use the same starting and ending frames for when we set details up in the transforms. So if we look at the timeline here and zoom in a bunch, it looks like the tracking is starting at frame 21. So that's where we're going to set our first keyframe for the transform. So I'll pop the transform node over here on the left. And in order to have that close up on the car shot, we're going to need to increase the size of our shot. So something like 1.7 is fine. And now we need to adjust the center X so that we can actually see the car. So I'm gonna move that all the way to the right side of the shot, but not going further than that. And now I'm going to set a keyframe here for the center X. So at frame 21, this is how the shot's going to look. And now we want to actually follow the car across as it moves to the other side. So if I hit space here, uh, the tracking is there, but it's not really on center. And when it gets to the ending frames, you can see how it actually exits the shot. So we're going to need to work on that a bit more. So uh, let's see, frame 71 here. Um, checking the planar tracker to see where that last keyframe is. That's where we're going to want to set up a keyframe for center X as well. So I'm going to basically pull this center X all the way to the right so that we can see the car as it actually exits the view. So now that we have the transform added as an adjustment with a size change and keyframing the center X, let's go ahead and play it one more time and kind of see how this looks. So as the keyframes start for the planner tracker, it follows the car across the screen and it exits about frame 71 where the tracking stops and the car just exits the shot. So that's pretty much what we're looking for. We obviously can't track something that's not in the shot, but we can remove extra keyframes that exist after it leads the shot so that the tracking looks smoother and it doesn't get any of that distortion bumpiness at the start or end of our tracking. So in a nutshell, that's how you can fix some of the issues that will occur if an object leaves the screen while you're tracking it. So hopefully this video helped you guys out a little bit and doing plan or tracking in DaVinci Resolve 15. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.